Hello, everyone. My name is Pirak Juthani. I am an MD MBA student here at Yale University. Um, and today I'm doing another residency deep dive, which is where I'm going to take you into a specialty like family medicine, which is the subject today, and tell you the average step one score, step two score, the number of publications, and kind of just show you the data that exists. The stuff that we're going to be going over today, the source is obviously always going to be linked in the description below. But the other thing I want to show you is this is, you know, part of a big, bigger series that I'm going to do. And it's part of this aspect that I did earlier, which was about internal medicine. So internal medicine, I did the step one and step two scores related to that, as well as the abstract and research pubs you need. Um, and I'm, today I'm actually going to compare family medicine to internal medicine and just kind of show you the types of data that exists. Again, all of the data that we're going to discuss today is usually related to current residents in the field. It's not just people who are applying to residency. It's for people who are already in residency pursuing the particular specialty of interest which for today is family medicine. And now let's talk about the um, total number and demographic of family medicine. Um, across all the residents who are in family medicine, there are 13,734 active residents. This is not just interns. These are all family medicine residents, whether that's year one, two, or three. Um, and I'm assuming most family medicine residencies are about three years. This 13,734 active residents for the entire residency of family medicine can be broken down into three categories, IMGs, MDs, and DOs. Of the 13,734, 3.6 thousand are IMGs, 5.6 thousand are MDs, and 4.4 thousand are DOs. 12.3% um, of the total 13,734 individuals are male IMGs. 13.9% are female IMGs. 17.6% of the total 13,734 are male MDs. And so you can kind of do this to figure out the total numbers. But as I said, this is a little bit more informative to just kind of show you the breakdown of family medicine, both in terms of where people are coming from, their background, and as well as like male and female identification. To provide a bit more context into all of this, I have actually, let me move this bad boy up, I have actually now compared family medicine to internal medicine. And you can see here, family medicine has a total of 13,000 residents um, total. Internal medicine has uh, many more because obviously internal medicine leads into a lot more subspecialties. And for that reason, there are many more slots. Um, you can also just know this just genuinely because uh, a lot of internal medicine residency programs across the country, United States wise, will have more slots than family medicine programs. Now, if you actually now compare these two, you can actually, you know, start start noticing a few trends here. So you can see that obviously there are more overall individuals in internal medicine residency. And then there's also a larger percent of um, international medical graduates for internal medicine when you compare it uh, to family medicine. So notice that 39% of the total internal medicine residents are um, IMGs, whereas 26% of the total family medicine residents are IMGs. Notice that 32% of family medicine residents are DOs, whereas only 16.2% of internal medicine residents or DOs. I'm using percentages to compare because that standardizes across the total number. Um, you can also see that females are more common than males in um, family medicine, which makes uh, me a little happy uh, because I think that, you know, it's reflecting this greater trend of male-female equality. And actually, if you look at med school statistics, more females are now applying and getting accepted to medical school uh, than males. And this is slowly becoming reflected in residencies as well. So all of this to say, you know, more females in family medicine, uh, more males in internal medicine, just general trends, but good to know. Next up, we actually want to now think about the step one and step two CK scores for family medicine, because obviously these are big, big things that are always important to consider when you're applying to residency, because your step one and step two CK scores are one of the objective measures used by every program. So on this table, you can see that this uh, this breaks down your step two CK score at the top and step one total score. And this is for the 3,362 first year residents in family medicine. This means that these are people who matched into family medicine and were starting their intern year in 2021. Uh, and this is important because the people who matched obviously are very qualified and uh, very impressive. And so the numbers that you're seeing here are not indicative of the average USMLE step one and step two CK scores. Um, for anyone who applied into family medicine, this is actually going to be much higher because these are people who actually matched and got into family medicine residency. So, you know, what, how to interpret this table is basically the intersection is usually where like different things happen. So if you look at this, 
This means that there's 1.1% of 3,362 individuals, 38 of them, had a step one score of 240 to 249 and a step two score of above 259. Um, similarly, if you wanted to go here, you can see that 100 individuals had a step one score of uh, 230 to 239 and a step two CK score of um, 230 to 239 as well, right? Similarly, if you look here, you can actually get an understanding of like all the step one and step two scores. So you can see that 14.3% um, uh, of all family medicine residents who are starting actually had a step one score of 190 to 199. And similarly, if you go here, you can see that about 10% had a step two CK score of 250 to 259. Just an interesting way to look at the data quantitatively. Now let's look at it broken down by percentiles. Um, and I've included, as you know, that there's step one, there's step two, and for individuals who are DO, they also take the complex one and the complex level two. You can see that a total, uh, this is just the number of applicants and numbers that were accessible. So of the people who got into family medicine residency who are first year students starting, uh, 1,527 submitted their complex levels one score and 1,527 submitted their complex level two score. Similarly, 3,573 individuals coming into family medicine residency, first year, intern year, submitted their step one score and a, a smaller number submitted their step two CK score. I think the reason you have significantly more step one and step two CK people than uh, complex level one and level two people is because almost everyone who takes complex ends up taking step one, but not anyone who takes step one ends up taking complex because of the MDDO uh, trade-off. Um, all that to say, this tells you the 10th percentile, 25th percentile, 50th percentile, 75th percentile, and 90th percentile. What do percentiles mean? It just means that if your step two CK score, for example, is a 252 or higher, you are in the top 10% of individuals who were accepted into family medicine residency. Similarly, if your step two CK score was above 241, you're in the top 25% because you're in the 75th percentile, which means your score was better than 75% of the people who are uh, accepted. As I said, this is all for people who are accepted, not for people applied. These are all much higher numbers, which is you know, obviously a much more impressive pool. Um, I, as I said, I think I get a lot more fun out of it because when you start comparing specialties, you can start noticing a bit more trend. Um, as we know, this is all of the first year students for, uh, for internal medicine, first year intern class for internal medicine. This is the intern class for family medicine. And the big thing to notice here is that for both of these specialties, there is a huge variation. The 10th percentile to the 90th percentile is usually a gap of upwards of 40 points, right? So the 10th percentile for internal medicine was 221 and the 90th percentile was 262. Similarly, the 10th percentile was 213 and the 90th percentile was 252. In both cases, there's a wide range. And I say this because it reaffirms the fact that there is still no one perfect applicant and that you can still get into residency despite doing really well or not doing as well because you'd be surprised at how many other factors go into this. Um, all that to say, the averages are also shown here and you can see that the average for internal medicine is a little bit higher than family medicine and different in different scores, but you can see that the percentiles still show like regardless, there's clearly very, very wide variety of people with wide variety of experiences. Now. Now that we've compared step one and step two CK scores, let's just end with uh, research, right? So for family medicine, the number of research experiences is shown here, and you can see that this is the total number of people for whom they had data, 4,275. Um, and you can see that the average number of research experiences was 1.7. The average number of abstracts, presentations, and publications was 2.8. The average number of work experiences was four, and the average number of volunteer experiences was 6.9. And again, each of these can then be broken down by percentile. So the, the top 10% of individuals accepted into family medicine had a uh, number of volunteer experiences that were above 13. Uh, similarly, the number of work experiences were above eight. And you can kind of work your way down in that realm. So hopefully for anyone applying into family medicine, this shows you the type of things that you should be aspiring for just because of uh, the quantitative aspects of you know, the number of experiences. Not to say you should need to do any of these things because notice that you can still get into family medicine residency without doing any research, for example, or uh, much work experience. Same with internal medicine. That was in the previous video. So all that being said, I hope this was helpful for everyone. If it was, drop a like, comment, share, subscribe. If there's any other specialties you want to see, let me know. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.